Hello, welcome. This is Sports Tonight. We're broadcasting live from Channels TV Sports Center in Lagos, Nigeria. Glad to have you join us to talk sports. I'm Austin Okonakman on the show tonight. What's going on right there? Uh, at the African qualifying draw for the, for the FIFA 2020 World Cup, we get our attention. Reactions continue to trail that one. Nigeria has been drawn in Group C. They will play Cape Verde, Central Africa Republic, and Liberia. Last night on the show, I spoke to Coach Gernot Roa and he described it as a tough group. Today, Wilfred Indidi, Leicester City midfielder, and also plays for the, for the Super Eagle, he says they cannot afford to be complacent. And I think that's the vibe that they need to use to get into the qualifier. So uh, let's get your reaction on the show tonight. What got you talking after the draw for the African qualifiers for the FIFA 2020 World Cup that will take place in Qatar. 40 countries were drawn into different groups. Only the leader from each group will advance to the final round of qualifiers. So you see, you blink, you're out. And I see a lot of groups where we have some one or two or three top teams in Africa. So it means one or two already know that they might not be at the World Cup in 2022. Remember, the NFF president, it was on our morning show on New Year Day. Amadou Penix says it's going to be a crucial year for football in Nigeria. NFF, yet to conclude on the renewal of the contract of Coach Gernot Raw. That's a question we're still asking because in March, they will get back to action for the AFCON qualifiers. And now we know the draw. We know the opponents of the Super Eagles for the FIFA 2020 World Cup that will take place in Qatar. How ready is Nigeria? We'll talk about football on the show tonight. Walk with us on this journey. We'll also uh, talk about what's going on in the English Premier League. We saw action yesterday. I, I asked now. They said no. With 10 men, they said, they said no, Chelsea. No, it's not going to happen. Not tonight. They came back. Are the Gunners are not winning now, but they are not losing also. Arsenal fans, let's talk tonight. On the league table, the Gunners, they are 10th after playing 24 matches. Liverpool. The coast in a way have played just 22. They have two more at hand, and nobody comes close. What do you think this year in the English Premier League? More action tonight. We'll continue to monitor those live action and we'll give you updates uh, as they come on sports tonight. Walk with us. We'll also take a look at the Tokyo 2020 Olympics. Already is Nigeria. When I started this countdown, uh person started. That, it, look, it's too early. No, don't start it now. Let's wait till 100 days. And I'm beginning to see that the time is taken away. 2020 has come. January is almost done. We're not, getting, we're not hearing much from Team Nigeria. Ministry of Youth and Sports, what's going on? Federations, what's going on? Even the athletes, uh, who is yet to qualify and is just folding hands, not doing anything. We'll continue our countdown to the Tokyo 2020 Olympics so somebody we know that there's still a lot to be achieved. Table tennis, we get our attention tonight on the program. I'll let you know that Team Nigeria, the female team actually, they crashed out of the qualifiers for the Tokyo 2020 Olympics. I don't like that story because table tennis is one sport that we're thinking can go to uh, the Olympics and give Nigeria some medal. I have, I have updates coming from boxing in Nigeria. We'll also talk about para power lifting. We've been monitoring what's going on, the issues as regards change of camping for athletes in Lagos. And they said, look, they want to go to Abuja. Uh, Abuja said the ministry is in charge. Supposed, the ministry is supposed to say where athletes will camp. I don't like this story with special sports because um, when we talk about special sports, we come here and then I praise them for making us feel the power of sports. Talk about the beautiful times they represent this country and they always do well. Uh, leadership. Leadership is beginning to make us look the other way as regards power, para power lifting in Nigeria. We will touch the issue tonight. The ministry says everything is under control. Uh, so we're waiting to hear uh, what came out of the meeting that they had tonight, uh, today in Abuja, uh, because all of this is geared towards the Para Power Lifting World Cup. We've been talking about it on this show, but I don't like the story coming out of Para Power Lifting in Nigeria. Let's just hope that the leadership will sit down and think about the athletes, think about the sports 
and find a way out of the problem. That's about the outlook of the show tonight. We'll also take a look at grassroots football development in Imo State. Imo State, they've been doing so much with sports development lately. Uh, who has joined the campaign this time around? We will tell you on the show. Walk with us on Twitter. What channels underscore sports? I want to hear from you. I want to hear from fans of Arsenal, fans of Chelsea, uh, Everton. <laughs> what happened last night? I don't, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with football. With football, you never can tell. And they thought they were winning that one. Four minutes to the end, it was two-two. That's what you get with football in the English Premier League. So talk to us using the hashtag EPL um, Action. We will go down tonight. We are monitoring that one. We'll let you know uh, so that you can be a uh, part of it. Leicester City, they are busy uh, on the show tonight. We'll tell you what's going down. Tottenham Hotspur, they are also busy. Manchester United, they are also busy in the English Premier League. Liverpool will be back tomorrow. I keep telling you that it's an action packed world of sports. So talk to us. You can also talk to us as regards table tennis in Nigeria. Talk to us. If you've been following para powerlifting, we've been trying to promote that sport. We love the fact that each time our para powerlifters go to the Olympics or any world championships, they do so well. But now we're hearing about athletes' protest. We're hearing about um, coaches being told to go. Uh, ministry saying, look, we are, we are monitoring the situation. It's under control. And we have the, para, the Paralympics coming up. Because these are the guys that go out there and win for us. So if they are not fine mentally, then there's a problem. We'll look at that issue also on the show tonight. So I talk to us just about any of these um, issues that I've raised and talking points on the show. Twitter, channels, underscore sports, Facebook channels, I think sports. All our top stories can be viewed on our website. It's channelstv.com and on YouTube for us last channels web because I want you part of the show tonight. Um, you can also download the Channels TV app for any of those devices that you see right there on your screen, just log on to m.channelstv.com and follow the instructions, download the app and be part of what's going down in our world of sports. It's a racy, pacy, action-packed world of sports. And so I want you to be part of everything that will be going down tonight. Are you ready? Let's go in with Chi. Why don't you quiz with us in the studio? Onye, it's good to have you on sports tonight. Always a pleasure, Austin. Mm -hmm. Onye, so much is happening. Let's begin with the... The Tokyo 2020 Olympics. I told them that, look, there's no time anymore. It's now 183 more days to go. What is it that you expect Nigeria to start doing at this point uh, that we're not doing? Well, um, Austin, I expect mm. that um, at this time, um, we should have known. <laughs> yeah, I mean, some of our athletes that are going to compete in the qualifiers mm. should have been well prepared if they are going to go on a training tour. Uh, the issue of a, a campaign should have been sorted out. You know, we should be ready if the qualifiers is supposed to start today. That's how it should be. Hmm. But we are hearing different stories. I know. You know, for what you have read out, yeah. um, I, I'm beginning to be apprehensive. Oh. You know, I, I, I don't want to sound like a, a pessimist, but hmm. it, so, some people will say, here we go again. Know. You know, the, moving like a babasia, all uh, motion and, and no movement. But the, the minister has promised a lot. We hope that things can still turn around. Uh, we said here that it's better late than never. Yeah. Uh, but, but the stories we are hearing are not uh, really palatable. Mm. Like you, you talked about um, the, the special people. Um, it shows that there's a disconnect <sighs> between the federation and yeah. the athletes. I yeah. mean, such issues should have been resolved. Mm. We shouldn't mm. be hearing about disagreement yeah. between the federation mm. and the athletes. And mm. Austin, these, these people have made us proud. I know. I was with them at the Commonwealth Games in uh, Australia the last time uh, that uh, event held, and they complained about so many about so many issues. Yet they go out of their ways, they break they records uh, over mm. and over again. And mm. that tournament, we broke the Nigeria broke about three or four uh, world records. Of course. And so, so I mean, it behoves that they should be given everything that they ask for. Mm. If they want a particular place for camping. I think it's ideal, it's only proper that they should be listening to um, be, be, because to whom much is given, much is expected. But if you don't give anything, yeah. you don't expect anything from these uh, athletes. Oh, yeah, I, I get you. So we'll just, we'll just see an amateur video that was sent to, to us. Uh, the athletes protest in Lagos. Uh, we've been trying to get some of them to talk to us, but only they're, they're saying that they like the equipment. They had a sponsor in Lagos that built this place for them that they want to camp here. I think originally, um, they were supposed to be here. Ministry says no. 
the ministry is in charge. It is Team Nigeria. The ministry is supposed to say where you will camp, monitor. These athletes say no, that this is where they want to stay in Lagos. But only what we've been able to gather is that first thing first, federation, they don't have a united federation. And that's why we always say that if the leadership is not okay, achieving results will be difficult. Austin, yeah, I mean, we, we, we have to say it as it is. Why is there a federation? Mm. Because of the athletes. So they come first. Mm. Not administrators. This is the only country where you, he you hear so much about administrators. Elsewhere, we talk about the athletes. It is their show. They should be given priority. So whether the federation are divided or not, they sort out their own problem. When it comes to the issue of um, the welfare of athletes, mm. where they will camp, mm. they, they must, it, it must be resolved. We shouldn't be hearing this, this kind of story. Yes. I mean, whether Lagos or Abuja, yeah. they are all part of Nigeria. And it should be for the good of the athletes. I, I get so athletes speak to, speak to the federation and say, we like facilities here. Coaches endorse in, in it also. Then federation takes it to ministry. So Absolutely. communication Absolutely. is the problem. And, and you also know that these people are special people. Mm. Move, moving from one place requires a lot of logistics. And we are in a... We, I, I don't want mm. to... We, 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 uh, with the risk of sounding yeah. very negative again, you know how things are here in yeah, this country. Yeah. We have not made really made arrangements, transportation, yeah. movement, logistics for these people. So I think that's the reason athletes are saying that they, they want to stay in Lagos. Another another issue that the athletes raised in their protest, they said Feisheto Are, I'm sure you know he's been with this team for Absolutely. a long time. That he was unceremoniously removed again. Ministry can come out and say, oh, can't we say what we want as coach? But then again, was it done the right way? That's the problem only which that was saying here. I mean, um, if if a coach has done so well, he was at the last Commonwealth Games. Uh, it's always turning out hmm. a very good athletes that are winning medals for this country. If if it was done on merit, I don't think the athletes would have, have any will have any issues about his removal. But again, you need to still do things the proper way. If you are going to remove him, yeah. and the athletes know that yeah. it was done, you know, uh, they, they were, the due process was followed, yeah. uh, they, no ill feelings, mm. no sentiments attached mm -hmm. to it, I don't think they will. Because they have already built a synergy <sighs> with this man. They, they, and, and, and when you are doing such a thing, why will you do it very close to an international event? Mm. If you want to remove a coach, immediately after the previous tournament, you can do that. So that the new, the new man in charge will begin to, um, you know, uh, get himself warmed up to the athletes. You know, yeah. these are special people. We, we must know. take their emotions, I know. their sentiments into consideration. consideration. And for the fact that they have been doing us proud, mm. means that um, when you want to take a decision, yeah. you, must, but you must consult them. Let's look at the other side. There's little they can do about the removal of Coach Are, for instance. If the ministry says we're the ones that gave him this job and we feel that it's about time for him to step aside, whether or not they do the right way, you and I know that coaches are hired to be fired. One, two. For instance, let's why do you fire a coach? Well, if he's not doing well, if he's not doing well, one, okay. If he's not doing well, Ancelotti wasn't doing badly in Napoli. <laughs> Get around. Let's no, he, was, he was. He was. He was. losing some games. That's what I'm saying. That that's just a sad case with coaches. So I'm saying they have a right. These special people, they they are comfortable with some certain persons that they already have around them. Let's use football, for instance. Let's say the NFF comes out and says, we don't want Coach Gunnar again. And they bring someone else. Will Indidi and Kelechi and Achan and the other players say, because we want this man, we're not going to play again for the Super Eagles. Indidi and Kelechi are not special people. That's the point. Exactly. They that are not is, special people. That's yeah. the point. You must give them, you must give them that, uh, that, that preference. You know, you do, do you know what they go through? Exactly. The Indidi and Kelechi, they get bonuses. $5,000. They, they, they are well taken care of. But well, these athletes train on their own. The only time we remember them when is they when, 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 they, when, when we have a tournament <sighs> and they go there and do us proud. So there, there's no basis for comparison. So the, this problem, let's just try to give you a background of this problem going on with para power lifting in Nigeria. And so Nigeria bid it for the para power lifting World Cup to host for about three years straight. And the ministry, we had the ministry side of the story on this show uh, when they brought the director of competition. She said, the ministry wasn't carried along by the federation, particularly the president, Queen Ubo. But yes, Nigeria has been given the right to host and was supposed to host it in February. And that's the camp that these this athletes are supposed to be preparing for that World Cup. 
They're supposed to be in Lagos. Ministry says no, it's going to be in Abuja. And there are talks that some of the equipment has been moved to Abuja. Let's hear what the ministry is saying now. Ministry says everything is under control. There was a meeting today in Abuja where they tried to, you know, only there's still a lot of compromise need to, need, need to be made, uh, need to be made to actually um, come to the to the end of this. So they said maybe they might dissolve the first committee, the committee that was made for this this competition, and then. In all, ministry just want to be in charge, know what is going on, because they felt that the federation didn't carry them along. Well, there, there, is, there is a problem, Austin. I mean, the, the, these are fundamental issues that, um, that has been raised. But uh, for me, the, the approach matters. If you want these athletes to move to Abuja, for instance, you lobby them. That's, you, you, you try to play on their emotions. Mm. You give them reasons. You know, you don't order people around. Sometimes... The, 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 the way you talk to the athletes could not, may, may not get the desired results. You try to pamper them because the, the sports minister is like a father to them. Yeah. I mean, if he calls them and talks to them like a father to, I mean, um, ch children, mm. they will listen to him. But you mm. can't order them around. Yeah. You can't order them around. Particularly because when you want to take persons that they are comfortable with. Uh, look, if, forget know. about the situation they are finding themselves. Most of them are breadwinners. I, exactly. I spoke to some of them. In, in Australia, most of them are breadwinners. And so they, they have a very important position in the society, in their families. Mm. So you, you, you can't just wake up and say, okay, move to Abuja. Yeah. No, it doesn't happen like that. It's not a, it's not a military setting. Mm. We, the, the right approach must be used anyway. to, to, to convince them. If, if it's necessary that they must move to Abuja, now the, the facilities, the equipment have been moved there. Mm -hmm. And if, if they continue training here, they will be at a disadvantage. Yeah. So, the approach must change. We I try to coerce them and, and lobby it's, them. It's the approach. So yeah. um, the ministry said they mean well. Um, that's the minister of sports on the diary confirming that that everything is fine, that it's under their control. So they had a meeting today. but waiting for more details of what was um, said at that meeting because we just want to understand what's really going on. Will Nigeria still host this para powerlifting World Cup? And if we're hosting, shouldn't it be for the special athletes that Oye talked about? Shouldn't we carry them along? Shouldn't we listen to what they need? Perspective. So we need to balance all of it. So uh, let's see uh, what's going to come uh, out of this one. We'll continue to uh, monitor it. Para powerlifting has done so well for Nigeria. We don't want this issue that we are talking about. From one issue to another. We've been talking about uh, athletes' welfare on this show. The last time I had Shaye Ogunlewe, Shaye Ogunlewe said, look, if you don't take care of your athletes, they shouldn't be accountable to you. So, Ministry of Youth and Sport today, they said they have uh, they've started the payment of athletes' allowances. Uh, oh, yeah, we know of a lot of competitions that our athletes have been to. For instance, uh, Nigeria's Youth and Junior Athletes to the CAA Under-18 and Under-20 Championships in Abidjan. Problems about unpaid allowances. Ministry has assured and they've said that they've started payment of those allowances. I'll get your opinion on that. Let's go on this quick break. When we come back, this new development as regards athletics in Nigeria, we get our attention and then we'll talk some more about qualification for the Tokyo 2020 Olympics. Don't go anywhere. Stay. Welcome back, Sports Tonight, on your award winning sports loving channels television. You can be part of the show. Talk to us on Twitter, channels underscore sports, Facebook, channels, I think sports. I got off the show in a not so good mood because of what's going on with para power lifting in Nigeria. Uh, we come here, we'll talk about the power of sports and what it has done in transforming the lives of special athletes. And now we're getting ready for the para power lifting World Cup in Abuja and there's a divide between the athletes. Some athletes are in Abuja, others are in Lagos. And what is in the middle of this crisis? Leadership. Leadership is in the middle of this crisis that are going on uh, in the para power lifting. Uh, Federation of Nigeria. So uh, we're hoping, as the ministry said, everything is under control. They had a meeting today. We hope that uh, they will come to an agreement. The athletes will come together, give Nigeria a good representation at the Para Powerlifting World Cup in February in Abuja, and then take that form to the Paralympics in Tokyo, uh, Japan. Uh, very, very good. So from there, we got into a much hairy news about the ministry are saying they've started paying athletes their allowances that we owed for some time now. Uh, one of them, the under-18 
18 and under 20 CAA championships that was done in Abidjan last year. The athletes came back. We heard about the ugly story of them even going by road. Ministry said, now, nah, look, we want to start paying them their allowances so that they can feel accepted, get some motivation as we get ready for the Olympics. It's a welcome development. Yeah. Right? Like you said, these this athletes went through hell, hmm. traveling by road, um, spent like two or three days before they got to Abidjan and um, had to compete for Nigeria oh. under unbearable conditions. But um, the, the ministry is doing the right thing um, by meeting the agreement they reached. Um, if you have um, said we're going to pay so and so an amount to these athletes for this tournament, then you have to do it. Mm. What it means is that uh, you, you make preparations. Uh, you try to appropriate funds for such um, events so that uh, as soon as the athletes also meet part of the agreement, you pay them. That, that will motivate them. You don't need to wait for eternity, uh, begin to assume a lot of things, and at the end of the day, um, the ministry will be in, in, the, in, the, in the news for the wrong reasons. Um, we want to you know, encourage the Honorable Minister to continue this way. Um, when athletes get their money, yeah. it, it motivates them. That's right. That is the reason yeah. they are in this profession. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's a profession for them. They of don't course. do any other thing apart yeah. from the, 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 this, this, this sport. So mm. that, that's, that's, the, that's what they, they, uh, uh, that's the, the end they are living from participating in sports. So yeah. you cannot be telling them stories all the time. Mm. It discourages athletes. So um, we, we want such trends to continue um, as we move to the Olympic Games. Okay, so... Uh, now that the ministry they've said this, we'll put calls across to the athletes. They are just to confirm. Did you get monies? Uh, because we know of that ugly situation. They traveled three days by road, competed for this country, and then you come back, just basic allowances. They're not paid. So uh, if it's true, kudos to the Ministry of Youth and Sports Development uh, for making this step to ensure that our athletes are motivated and that they feel loved. You know, particularly this period that we're getting ready for the Tokyo 2020 Olympics. We continue to monitor everything going on with sports <laughs> developments in Nigeria. Let me give you updates coming from table tennis. Nigeria's female table tennis are players' quest to book a sport. At this year's Tokyo 2020 Olympics, in the women's events, have been dashed. Yeah, sad. At the ongoing ITTF World Cup qualification tournament. Uh, that is taking place in Portugal, Nigeria crashed out of the qualifiers. The team lost to Poland in the round of 32-3-0. The pair of Olufunke or Sean Ike and Janet Ophion are lost 3-0 to the pair of Natalia Patrika and Natalia Bajo in their first match. Juan Lee beat Ophion, Adam Ophion 3-1 in the women's single and Natalia Bajo completed the route for Poland beating Janet Ophion in the singles. 3-0. Nine teams in a men and women's event are expected to qualify for the Olympic Games and subsequently be entitled to confirm two athletes to take part in the singles event. Uh, look, when things like this happen, yes, we feel bad because it would be good to see our female um, our table tennis players at the Olympics. They were there at the Rio 2016 Olympics. Um, but this reminds us that we need to do more for to develop female table tennis in Nigeria. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I, feel, I feel very sad and uh, pity for, and especially for Funko Shonaike. She was not in the ambition yeah. of going to the Olympic Games uh, once again. But like you said, uh, we can only get what we, I mean, reap what we sow. And um, we have not invested. Remember the last Commonwealth Games, there were issues uh, about fielding uh, the, the women's team. Mm. And eventually, they didn't go. Um, a lot of issues were raised. Uh, Yastik and uh, the technical uh, department said they, they, they would only feel the men's team. And, uh, but, but, but for me, I, I thought that um, going to the Commonwealth Games would have exposed the players more. Yeah. I mean, when you go to that tournament, you get you compete against the best uh, in the Commonwealth um, of uh, countries. And um, from there, you can begin to um, get consistency, um, you go to more, more tournaments. But we haven't done that. So... Um, I, I feel sad on the one hand, but when you look at it critically, you, I think we deserve what we got. Yeah. That's so what you saw your reap, um, because we've always been talking about it, uh, that more needs to be done for women's um, table tennis in Nigeria. It's not a good one, but hey, in every defeat, there is a lesson. Yeah, so... and, and we also have to highlight that um, the Federation is doing their best, but for the men, mm. I think they are lucky that they have somebody like, I don't know, Quadri, you know, 
who has you know used his position yeah. his status to to, to mentor mm. some of especially the young the, the lad that won the African Games. I mean I mean he yeah. sees Aaron Quadri mm. like Jidia a, a, Mota, yeah, Jidia Mota, like defeated a mentor. Aaron Quadri yes, in African he defeated, Games. Defeated Shego Rola and yeah. defeated the Egyptian. <laughs> so it's good. It, it's good. Yeah, because you can say what Shego Toriola has done for Aaron Quadri. Olufunke Oshanaike has done for Edem of Young. Yeah. But the process of us developing male table tennis players, we should do the same for female table tennis players. Because if you the attention you give to a man, you need to give double to a woman. So maybe that's, that's what the Federation needs to do to, to ensure. Because we have the talents, but there's just something missing that's not making them uh, win. But hey, we still love our ladies, and we know that they will bounce back as we get ready for the Tokyo 2020 Olympics. They will learn from this experience and see and keep the positives from it. Let's get on with the show now. Talk about boxing in Nigeria. This is one that we don't really talk about because we don't get to hear much about boxing development. The Nigeria Boxing Federation, the NBF, they have proposed January the 25th for campaign ahead of the Africa Olympic Qualification Championship. The championship is scheduled for Dakar, Senegal from February the 20th to the 29th and will serve as the country's first attempt to qualify Boxers for the multi-sports competition in Tokyo. Uh, the MBF, that's the Nigeria Boxing Federation, they have confirmed 13 boxers uh, made up of five men and seven women boxers are expected to attend the qualifying competition. Only one boxer, his name is Efe Ajagba, uh, represented Nigeria at the Rio 2016 Olympics, and the MBF is targeting featuring 10 boxers at Tokyo 2020 Olympics. You can make targets, so yeah, you can make plans but what are you doing to realize those goals? What is the Federation doing to get ready for the Olympics? I mean, uh -huh. ten, 10 boxers. And um, mm. we, we have less than a month uh, okay. to the qualifiers. Okay. And uh, we are just going to camp. And we don't know the shape, the mental and physical shape of these boxers. Yeah. What they've been doing when they're not in camp. And mm. how much have you invested Thank you. in these boxers? So Thank you. making projections um, are very easy. But um, the way, the, the, the realization of the targets, mm. what you offer these boxers, um, I mean, these sports have gone scientific. The modern sports have gone scientific. So what we can't stay uh, in the background. I yeah. think we can uh, get uh, to, to, to the Olympic Games. These are wide, for me, it's, it's a wide goose chase. If, if, what we should be doing now is to manage the situation. Instead of 10, look at the possible boxers who may get the, the tickets and focus and put and focus. attention on them. If, if we have about three or four yeah. that have the potentials, mm -hmm. because we really don't have enough time yes. to, to, to prepare, then prepare those uh, mm -hmm. instead of making white goose uh, chase. So you've been covering this bit for some time. Tell me from last year till this time, the, the, the boxing championships you had in this country. I mean... <laughs> and you're, and you're uh, making this sort of... Apart from um, the... The Hall of the, yeah, the Hall and of maybe the one sponsored by. And, I by, mean, at this wow. level, they, they are not up to the level of the Olympic Games. Because at the amateur level, why you think you're going there to go and find knockout? Somebody is picking points. That's what happened to Efe Ajagba at the Rio Olympics. You think that oh, because you are from Africa, you face somebody from Cuba, and you're just looking for that big knockout, and the guy is just touching you. Current trends. How how equipped are the have, coaches? Yeah, have we attended the latest tournaments? I mean, this, the, the rules are evolving. They are always changing. Yes. I mean, so when you, when you even qualify and get to that level, you are at a disadvantage. I know. You know, there was a, I mean, it, this was a very funny scenario mm. at one of the Olympic Games when, when the, the coach was telling the boxer, say, uh, uh, no, no, no. I, I mean, and the other, the other uh, their opponents had good tactics, yeah. techniques. That they use. At the end of the day, we are we are we are alleging that we are robbed, yeah. but we just no. exposed our ignorance no, we, to the whole world. That's what it is. That is it. So we can only uh, well wish wish Team Nigeria all the best, but we know that our boxing needs to do so much more for development. This is boxing we're talking about. Before independence, Nigeria had already produced world champions. The likes of the Tiger, Dikie to Tiger and Hogan Kid Basi. We have been so good with boxing from Jerry Oboro Dudu to BC and Wakba. The one silver at the Los Angeles Olympic Games in 1984. Names you can call. You now look at boxing in Nigeria. You are wondering, what have we done? We need to retrace. We need to do more. 
We need to make it shine again. So all the best to the boxers that will be competing at that uh, qualification tournament that will take place in Dakar, Senegal. I'm here. I'll give you all of the updates. Let's get to football now before we get into the main gist of the FIFA 2022 Award Cup qualifiers. Let's talk about grassroots football development. And we're going to over the Imo State capital where a former Athlan boss uh, is doing so much in discovering new talents. I've been, I've been monitoring what Imo State have been doing. Let's just hope that uh, this transition that we're having, we keep the momentum going because they believe that they can rebuild the state through sports. Absolutely, Austin. I mean, when you look at our performance at the last Under-17 World Cup, Ashley, you agree with me that we need more investment in, in uh, grassroots uh, development. That's right. And uh, China's Kids Cup, mm. um, the Nigerian Football Federation have invested in Under-13, Under-15. But we have 774 local governments in Nigeria. So what mm. it means is that People should come up, you know, and fund the grassroots uh, tournament yeah. with the Vlogs. So that, that's what um, um, Good Faith O Chairman is doing, the former Heartland uh, um, um, yeah. uh, ch chairman, mm -hmm. investing in youth development in his, in his community. And he's been doing that for quite a while now, pulling resources together to sponsor a tournament in memory of uh, a man that gave him scholarship years back. And um, we need to commend him. Um, already, he's paying dividends. Um, a player has um, signed a, a, a deal in Turkey, and um, it, it, it keeps the, 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 the youth in that community focused. Yeah. It takes them out of crime, that's, and the, 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 the benefits are enormous. They look forward to it, and Absolutely. that's very, very important. For someone that has been involved in, with Heartland, and who knows, he's still involved with the club because he can give counsel here yeah, and there. These, these players will like, ah, if I do so, I might start by even playing for Heartland. Absolutely. So that is an avenue to dream. So anything about grassroots um, development, it is good. It is one that we can embrace. So we're just hoping that Imo State will, will continue with the good. We don't want to come back and say, ah, that time, it was good. This time they came and then we are not saying the same thing. Uh, let's just hope that they keep the momentum going as regards sports development in Imo State. Let's talk about the big one now, the FIFA 2022 World Cup qualifiers. The draw was done last uh, yesterday in Cairo, Egypt. Nigeria uh, was drawn in Group C. They will take on Cape Verde, Central Africa Republic, and Liberia. Uh, I spoke with Coach General in Uchi and He says, oh, I don't know what you guys are talking about. It's a tough group. Do you agree with it? I agree with totally. Mm. I mean, there are there are there are no small teams any longer in football. What Madagascar did to yes, the Super Eagles at the Last Nations Cup should have taught everybody a lesson that uh, if you underrate your opponent, you pay dearly for it. That's right. And um, uh, Central African Republic have shown they have grown in leap, leaps and bounds. Um, the the other opponent, Kivet. At the time, we are the top-ranked team you know, in Africa. And and about three years ago, they, yeah, were, on yeah, they, were, they were on fire. And mm. um, these are countries that uh, we shouldn't uh, take for granted. Yeah. Then Liberia, we played a friendly against them um, last year, and it was tough. Mm. You know, so the, the, the African game is um, very combative, very physical, and you have most of our players in Europe. So they have this um, problem of trying to uh, switch, adapt, uh, uh, adapt mm. to, to, to situations here. And sometimes you play on very terrible pitch, like the, like the one in, uh, in, <laughs> in, in the, the, the very terrible artificial uh, uh, turf. So some of these African teams, when they know that it's the Super Eagles of Nigeria, or those, that country that has a lot of European players, they take you to a very bad pitch, pitch. where they know that it is going to be very advantage. difficult. But hey, um, everybody... I, I, I really like the mentality of the, the, the coach, uh, Ganatro. Mm. And we hope that... Uh, Every issue surrounding his contract will be, will be resolved. Yeah, like you mentioned in your opening, yeah. uh, in your intro, yeah. in March, the Nations Cup qualifiers have, have been brought forward yeah. because it's going to be in January next year, mm -hmm. no longer uh, June, July, in the summer. Yeah. So they, they had to bring it forward. What, what it means is that we, we, don't, we have less than yeah. two months yeah. Yeah. to sort out his contract and issues. You mentioned, I know you, I commended his, his, his level of professionalism because he would have said, Oh, Austin, I can't talk to you. I'm, I'm, I don't have a new contract, so I'm not the coach of the Super Eagles of Nigeria. I'm waiting for them to... No, because his it's, it's, eyes are set on the prize. That's a signal to the NFF that this man is ready to work. So we need to, to jump up and do those things that we need to do. Let's just run through the group again. So this time around, we'll just, just focus on Nigeria so he can uh, give his views. In Group A, we have Algeria. Group, group A, Algeria, Burkina Faso, 
Niger Republic and Djibouti. Uh, take a look at Group B. Tunisia, Zambia, Mauritania, and Equatorial Guinea. Uh, and with what Zambia has been doing with their football, uh, you cannot just jump up and say Tunisia will, will take um, top spot in this one. Group C has got Nigeria, Cape Verde, Central African Republic, and Liberia. When you look at Group D, Cameroon, Cote d'Ivoire, Mozambique, and Malawi. I know it's just one yeah. that will get out of this. The, the winners. We'll get Precious. to the, the, the last round. Cameroon. It Cote makes it very so, tough. So either Cameroon or Cote d'Ivoire yeah. might be out of that's the qualifiers. It, that's what it, what it means. Tough. You see what we're talking about? Group E, Mali, Rwanda, Kenya, and Uganda. None of these teams have been to the World Cup before. So somebody will be making history uh, if they advance at this one. In Group F, there's Egypt, Gabon, Libya, and Angola. 2022 FIFA World Cup qualifiers, Group G, Ghana, South Africa, Zimbabwe, Angola. Very tricky. Group G, Group H, Senegal, Congo, Brazzaville, Namibia, and Togo. In group I, there's Morocco, Guinea, Guinea-Bissau, and Sudan. Group J, there's Congo, DR, Benin Republic, Madagascar, and Tanzania. African football is developing. African football, there is no small team. There is no, we'll push this one aside. We are ready. So that is why Wilfred Ndidi, after the draw was made, he said, look, they cannot afford to be complacent. I agree with him. Yeah, that's, that's the attitude of a professional. Mm. I mean, he's, he's playing in the, in the best league in the world and they've he, experienced a situation where the, the lower teams actually upset the bigger teams. I mean, mm. what you need to do on the, on the night is to believe in yourself, prepare very well, and take your chances. And if you do that, you're likely to get um, the desired result. Like you said, Austin, um, we are going to have the possibility of um, some teams making their debut yeah. at the World Cup. Like mm. in Group J, you have Congo, the Albania Republic, Madagascar, Tanzania. Yeah. Then in Group A, like you said, Mali, mm -hmm. Rwanda, Kenya, Uganda. Uh, Uganda. Though Mali might fancy their chances, but um, ah, you but can't what? rule out the, the, the exploits of yeah. the, the improvement of Kenya and, and Uganda. Uganda. Uganda came here uh -huh. and, and gave us a, a hell of a time yeah. before the Nations Cup. And I, uh, I mean, we saw this in your mouth, uh, record absolutely. And, uh, and um, these are countries that will fancy their chances. Yeah. Uh, like you said, Group D, Cameroon, Cote d'Ivoire, obviously very tough. Very, very, very tough. I'm and, like, uh, why? Why? Because we need our best at the World Cup. But, but hey, it is what it is. The draw has been done. Let's take a um, reaction from uh, the draw ceremony. Akuna and Iseki, our officials have been giving. Uh, their views, and when we come back, we'll see what's going on in the English Premier League. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Welcome back, Sports Tonight on Channel Television. We're broadcasting live from uh, Lagos, Nigeria. Before I get into uh, the FIFA 2022 World Cup qualifiers, uh, I'm getting updates regards that meeting that was done in Abuja uh, today to resolve the issues going on in the Para Power Lifting Federation of Nigeria. At the camp, uh, according to what was agreed at a meeting. The camp in Lagos will be closed and all participants will proceed to the Abuja camp. Uh -huh. That's what ministry wanted and that's what they have agreed. Uh, we'll get to confirm this. A provision has been made for the inclusion, camping and participation of junior athletes in the Para World Cup. The LOC and subcommittees may, may be dissolved. The chairman who was a representative of the first lady may give way for the sports ministry permanent secretary as the chairman. So you see, as I said, it's leadership, all of these things, leadership, and now it's getting to affect uh, the athletes. Uh, Coach Are is being considered for re-inclusion in the technical crew. He might, however, not be retained as the head coach. Some persons will say, no, we're not okay with that. But they were just trying to get away out of all of this. So a lot of talks went down today in Abuja. So as we get the updates, channels, television, we'll give them uh, to you. And then uh, get a balance. Talk to the ministry again and talk to the federation just to understand if we have all, if they are all on the same page for the development of the sport in Nigeria. Consider, considering what Onye said, that we're dealing with special athletes. Ah, yes, we must have that in mind. Know that we're doing this to, to keep them motivated, to empower them, to make them see reasons to keep winning. That's a power of sports right there. So let's not mess it up. Let's get on with the show. I told you we're talking about the FIFA uh, 2022 
World Cup qualifiers, you've seen the draw, you listened to the Black Stars coach, and of course, the, the, that of South Africa. Coach Gernot Roy, yesterday, he's been a very busy man, but we know that what has been happening as regards his contract renewal, but I put a call across to him, we talked, and he says, look, it's a very difficult group. We want to play back uh, that, is that reaction from Coach Gernot Roy again, and then I'll get Oye to talk about it before we get to the English Premier League. Group we have is a Cap Verde, a very, very good team, one of the best teams in Africa a few years ago. Then we have uh, Liberia, we played there friendly, it was not easy at all on this uh, difficult pitch. In Monrovia, we have Central Africa, which is a very good country for football. Also, they have players in France, they have players in Europe. Uh, it's a team we don't know so much, so we have to work a lot to have uh, good information about our opponents. Is this still now the moment to go to the qualifiers for the AFCON? But we will already have a look on our opponents with our scouting staff, with our analyzer, with the video. And uh, we will be very well prepared because the matches are coming soon. Since uh, the end of the year, October already, we will start this World Cup qualifiers. I'm careful in this group, but I'm optimistic because we have a good team. We still will progress because everybody is doing well, doing the hard work. The team is young. Our players... Uh, have a little bit of experience. Some of them did already a World Cup. The Ndidi, Iwobi, uh, Tebo, Ekong, all, and uh, Uzoho, I, I hope he will be fit again very soon after his injury. And uh, so, yes, but let's focus now to be qualified very quickly in March, if it's possible. Uh, we have to win the games against Sierra Leone. This is the next step for all of us. We still have the time to prepare the World Cup. So that's the voice of uh, Super Eagles coach. Oh, yeah, am I allowed to call him that? Super Eagles coach. Yeah, he's still the coach. Yeah, he's still the he's coach. Still the coach. Yeah. Because yeah. the minister, has not, um, the federation has not come out to say the other is still coach. Or not. As a matter of fact, his um, contract expires in June 2020. Awesome. So so, though still... it allows him to discuss with potential um, mm. suitors mm. If, if the NFF fail to start um, a discussion to extend his deal by yeah. January, February. Yeah. Just listening to him, are you impressed with his level of professionalism? Yeah, I mean, I mean I'm, I'm moved mm -hmm. that um, in spite of all the, 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 in spite of the fact that uh, his contract has not been sorted out, he's still talking. He, he, he's still got an audience to journalists from Nigeria talking about the team. Uh, shows that um, uh, Genero loves his team. Mm -hmm. He wants to continue. So the ball, the, the, uh, I mean, the ball is right now on the table of... Um, the Nigerian Football Federation to do the needful. And what does that mean? Ensure that um, uh, institute um, the process to uh, uh, discuss about his, the extending his contract. We hear so many things on the media. Um, the media is not uh, the natural. They know the man that they hired. And if yeah. they want to extend the deal with him, they know how to you know, discuss with him. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't be hearing, put um, the issue on the, on the media. It's not a media trial. You discuss with the man you employed yeah. and sort it out. If you want him, extend the deal. If you don't mm. want him, then um, um, uh, 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 terminate it by mutual consent for whatever reasons yeah. and uh, move on. Get the man, a new man, to handle the team. And between now, Austin, between now and March, it's less than two months. It just reminded us that March, we have Sierra Leone. Now, what are we doing about it? It just used that as I ended it. That we need to focus on that because that's the momentum you will take into October. Absolutely. Very, Absolutely. very important. So... The Nigeria Football Federation, we will hoping that something is done about this. Before we wrap up the show, let's quickly check out what's going on in the English Premier League. Uh, so, Brandon Rogers quickly has introduced um, Wilfred Indidi to the match. We wanted him to be to be 100 percent fit. Ah, Indidi got in and um he cost the penalties. Leicester City two, West Ham one, Tottenham one, Norwich City a zero, Manchester United and Burnley, they're still playing goalless. At Old Trafford. But let's talk about this Wilfred Indy the issue. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, it means a lot to Leicester, but maybe, maybe they would have just allowed him to 
fully recover. Yeah, I think so too. Um, um, so unfortunate. It happens to the best players uh, in the world. Remember that Fernandinho scored um, an own goal last weekend. He's been committing uh, penalties because he has been played out of position. So for Ndidi, uh, I agree with you. I think he was rushed because um, since yesterday, for, for quite uh, some time now, the coach has been saying he made a, a remarkable recovery. I mean, whatever that means. So allow the player to get fully fit. We understand that uh, they have issues. Um, they have issues in that position. Uh, they've been losing matches. Um, um, I just hope that they win, they win this game today. But for Andidi, that is where, where our own concern lies. Yeah. It shouldn't be rushed. I, I can bet, I can put my money that if it was the national team, when the Rangers will obviously not release him. <laughs> I know. So uh, we're Fred Andidi. I'm glad that he's playing a game, but hey, uh, he needs to uh, fully recover from that one. So, updates coming from the English Premier League. Leicester City 2, West Ham United 1, Tottenham 1, Norwich 0. And just about a minute ago, I said it was goalless, but now it's Burnley 1, Manchester United 0 at Old Trafford. At Old Trafford. I don't know. Only, 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 only has got more than 10 lives of, of a cat. I don't get I, I really don't know whether he will, he will survive this um, this season. Um, I mean, he he, he had um, lost some games in a most atrocious manner, and um, you, we've seen uh, coaches lose their jobs for doing. Mourinho not didn't do up, up to this. this and then it was done. Maybe they are looking at him as the legend of the yeah. club, and um, and uh, remember uh, Roy Keane coming to support him, uh, even comparing him to Frank Lampard. That if um, Lampard still retains his job, that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer should also be allowed, you know, to continue what he's doing. But sometimes you look at um, the sentiments of the of the fans, their emotions, and mm. losing at losing against Burnley. I know at the at Old Trafford. I mean, this one will spark a lot of conversation. <laughs> uh, tomorrow, the English Premier League will be back with Wolverhampton Wanderers taking on Liverpool. Liverpool still unbeaten in the league. Wolves, they're a decent team that can upset any team on a good day, but. What well, I've seen of Liverpool, I don't think it's happening anytime soon. Even when they are not playing well, they are winning. I know, I know. So we'll be back again tomorrow to talk more in the English Premier League. That's how far we can go on this edition of Sports Tonight on Channels Television. Thank you so much for stopping by. Yeah, my pleasure. Mm. And of course, to you, wherever you're in the world watching Sports Tonight on Channels Television. I keep telling you, the conversation doesn't end. Can we keep talking sports? Yes, we can. Talk to us on Twitter, Channels underscore Sports. Facebook channels, I feel sports. That's the show for the team. I'm Austin Okonakpan. In everything you do, remember to keep talking sports life.